Good morning, everybody. Today is a uh, Monday, and uh, we got a load this morning out of Opelika, Alabama, which is about 100 miles north. This way wants me to go the long way. See, if it if it if it got me going extra long, then I kind of like try to see if I can make my own route. So 139, that's about two and a half hours maybe through here. So if I just cut across through country roads, it might take me two hours, less miles too though. Uh, but we got a little going from Opelika, Baxter and Opelika, Alabama to Baxter and Opelika, not Opelika, <laughs> Baxter and Jacksonville, Florida. So nice little short load, not too, not too much. Yesterday was the Super Bowl, right? And I start. I was watching it on my phone, and it was it was interesting. I'm not a big football guy, so it was interesting. I I took one of my sleeping uh, gummies from Walmart. I'm gonna post it right here. These things are deadly, guys. These, these things will sneak up on you and put you to sleep. Five minutes later, I was knocked out. I didn't wake up till this morning. My dispatcher called me this morning. I didn't wake up till then. But these things will sneak up on you. But the Super Bowl was, uh, I watched the replays. Looks like I missed a good game, but I'm not that interested in March 1st. I can't wait for March 1st. That's when Formula One starts back up. So, I wonder if I could have went that way. But yeah, we're on the way to Baxter. It's medical supplies, <coughs> 22,000. <000. clears throat> that the, on the last vlog, uh, number, vlog 16, that load from Lancaster to Baton Rouge, that was also medical supplies. So hopefully it's something like that. Right here, he strictly told me that I have to give him two to four hours to load me. Anything after two is detention, but two to four hours. So we'll see how it goes. These back roads right here is what I imagine the truck driving was like back in the day, back in the, you know, before my time, probably even before my father's time. Nothing but country. People, uh, I mean, on social media, people only see the city parts of uh, uh, places, the real populated parts. But there, if you travel the country, there's a lot of beautiful uh, countryside. Here in Alabama, it gets uh, some places have big hills and. Just nothing but woods for miles and miles and miles. So, very beautiful landscape out here. The rural countryside. <clears throat> Old. Look at this little wood uh, processing plant. Lumber yard. Pretty, I like stuff like this. Oh, look at that W9. That's a beautiful truck right there. I always wanted a W9. But uh, the older ones, the W9As are, uh, what is it called? It has a certain specification. I was like, whoa, what's going on?
country towns like this. This is uh, reminds me of Louisiana. We're probably we're the second biggest city in uh, Northeast Louisiana, the Shreveport and Monroe. So that that says uh, country it is up there where I'm from. <laughs> another breakdown told you i can't i can't catch a break so i'm coming down i'm coming north on 51 to uh open lock all right pick up my load going down the hill i hear a fluttering noise and i'm like oh, man i know something ain't wrong with my engine or something like that so I'm scared. I'm looking at my gauges. It's all a split second. Looking at my gauges. And uh, yeah, forget pulled over. And guys, I have a blown steer tire. Well, actually it's not blown. It's actually just lost pressure. Well, not lost pressure, but it, it got a hole in it. So this is, if you're gonna blow a steer tire, this is probably the ideal way to blow it. Not blow, because if blow, if you blow it, then all this gets this, this gets blown out. You could blow your uh, headlight, and this and this right here that has to be probably two thousand dollars right there. Even though I do have spare of this, this you could buy these new fiberglass six hundred unpainted, so it's not that expensive. But yeah, there's a gash behind it. I call these guys. He shouldn't be too far. It's coming to repair my trailer, my truck, so. Today is a lost day, they canceled the load because it's medical supplies, they wanted it there soon, but tomorrow we'll go get the same load. So, I'm just blessed that it went, caught a gash and got flat and not blow. So, I can look up to that, so. The guy should be on his way. Called him maybe like an hour and a half ago, he said he was on his way, so. He's coming from this way, so hopefully he does not, not too much longer. We'll see. Well, good morning. Uh, man, after that blowout, it was, uh, my load got canceled, so they, uh, they didn't reschedule it, but they have one for the next day, so I took that since it was paying good. So we're going to Jacksonville still with some medicine. But I made it to this truck stop right here. I usually come here when I'm in Opelika, this area right here. It's my go-to. But they're over here, uh, false false advertisement. Cause it says it has a wing stop. Y'all probably can't see, but that sign below the one nine and mobile, it says wing stop. And they most definitely do not have a wing stop in this location. But they make up for it because the restaurant that's in there is pretty good it's a buffet 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 style of stutter and you eat as uh eat as much as you want and they also have a liquor store for my drinkers they you know you down for a couple hours get you a drink but we're about six minutes away from our pickup this is actually exit 65 if i'm not mistaken it's the next exit from either 64 or 65. The next exit south is 63, then 62 is 280 towards Columbus. So we got to go back south. Uh, unfortunately, I got that that blowout last yesterday. But got to keep pushing. This is what uh, this is what happens in the game. So about to go out here and get this medicine. Hopefully, we can find a good load out of Jacksonville or Savannah and maybe I can go home for a couple hours or for my 10 hour break so we'll see so 
I came to the delivering side. They told me just take this gravel road back here and go around to the other side. So let's see. Hopefully nobody's coming on that side. Oh no, by this one right here, there, fella. They got this. Look, they got this manhole right here. That could be bad. Bad. He just told me to back in the door one. He'll let them know that I'm back there, so that works out. That works out. Well, Baxter is where I picked up here. Baxter, I guess they make medicine. Oh, poor lady, shit. Pay attention. So, we're on the way to Jacksonville. I'm not sure where I want to stop at. We got to be in Jacksonville at 8 o'clock. So maybe Albany. Yeah, Albany's too close. Albany. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. Uh, good morning, guys. Here in Albany, Georgia. At this pilot. When I'm in this region, it's one of the places I tend to stop to because of uh, Walmart's right across the street. A bunch of restaurants across the street, so it's a good little piece. But look at this thing right here. I think uh, this is a Marine vehicle right here. Pretty badass. I actually, for a short time, I actually did RGM and I exclusively hauled military vehicles. I know I got pictures of that, so I'll show one or two of my loads up here. But, this is this is my this is what I really want to get to uh, at the end of the day as a owner operator I want to get to this position where I'm hauling open deck freight I am I am a I am a flat better at heart flat betting is where I, you would say I thrive at that's where that's I know what I'm doing when I'm flat bed. And that's what I prefer to do. Open deck freight. So right now Reaper, I love it. I like it too. It's easy. The only thing uh, good about Reaper is it got us through COVID because when everything was at a standstill, people still had to eat. So COVID was there to keep truckers in uh, in motion. So that's why that's why we're I'm in it in right. I'm in it right now, so let's go in here, take the shower, get my free coffee. The subway is open at four o'clock in the morning. That's crazy. Let's go in here and get our shower. Right there at eight. So 
I misjudged this one. Well, I took a shower this morning and it uh, slowed me down. Uh, uh, it took too long. Ooh. So, let's get it. Well, guys, I got unloaded. Uh, I guess with this... Uh, <clears throat> here, when I got here to Jacksonville, it was... They opened up from the inside, so I really couldn't record much of what I picked up. But I will post a picture of what I did, I, like uh, what I did pick it up. It's some sort of filter for dialysis machines. So, yeah, right now we're waiting on Lowe's. So supposedly there's a new Loves on uh, 295. So I'm headed towards that to see uh, what it's looking like. And I, I, I'm sure it's gonna be packed. But if you ever been to that pilot on 295? In Jacksonville, you you go one time, you don't go unless you need fuel, because it's very I mean, everybody piles into them, piles in there. It's just a nightmare. So let's go see what this new love is talking about. Well, we got our load. It is a load of chicken from. Hoboken, Georgia. It's like 60 miles north of uh, Jacksonville. A little south of from where, uh, where I live at. It's a load of eggs going up to Gillsville, which is another uh, egg. They ship eggs from where, where I'm taking it to. I've been there before for sure. But eggs are, they're very strict with eggs now. Not only has the price risen, but a lot of the a lot of the reason for the price of eggs going up is bird flu and bird flu is killing off a lot of uh, uh, you know chickens that lay eggs so when I go pick up eggs usually when I go when I go pick up when I go pick up they don't require a truck wash but cow Maine has been very strict with their eggs uh, their pickup, so they want you to pick up there before you pick up and after you pick up. So that's what we have to do. It has to be there tomorrow. So a load of eggs is pretty expensive. If y'all, you know, if a carton costs five five dollars, imagine a truckload of eggs. So yeah, so now I got to get a truck washed today, right now, which is Wednesday. And then before I deliver up north, North Atlanta, Gillsville is uh, north of uh, Gainesville over there, off in the country. I have to get a truck wash before I get there because they don't want no contaminants. Uh, me bringing any contaminants off the side of my truck into the into the into the chicken plant. What they're gonna do is when I get I get my truck wash here, possibly when I get to Hoboken, they're gonna they're gonna wash my truck again at the place they kinda got a rack that you drive into and the weight of your truck turns on the sprinkler and it you know washes your truck as you're moving through a shed and then same thing when I get to uh Gillsville. Not Gillsville? Gillsville, they just wash your tires off. So, different different places call for different things, or they got their own little standard. So, we'll see. So nice. I'm here at the Cedar Grove truck wash here in Jacksonville. There's not too many truck washes here in Jacksonville, so I'm here to get my truck wash and we'll get out of here. So, let's see. Made it here, made it here to our delivery. Truck looking nice. Ah man, big old, big old mud, mud hole right here. It's very unfortunate. So, there's no way to avoid it really. <laughs> as much as I want to avoid it, there's no avoiding it. Oh man. 
do go through a sprayer on the way out, so that might make up for it. So. Trailer is in the mud. of eggs is the as the <laughs> well let's get it loaded and let's go too many people around here now give you guys a, a, a proper good morning instead of y'all getting me bit. And let, instead of me bitching about it uh, good morning here in Jackson Georgia at the this used to be a Wilco it's now a pilot um, so earlier I said people tend to come through this 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 entrance right here this is not an entrance this has really always been the exit, right? But see, even at the exit, they even at the exit, they park right here, park on the end. People stack up right here, and you gotta thread your way through here. And then people usually come down this little ramp right here and, and, and try to get to the fuel islands that way. When they're supposed to go straight through the light, and make a right after the pilot. But they don't know that. There's no signs that say it either, so I can see why people don't know. Um, but, yeah, we're 115 miles. I was pretty close, 100, I think I said 130, 140. But right here, when it gets real dark, it's kind of confusing. I seen trucks line up in this oncoming lane right here, trying to make a left into the, into, uh, to get on the interstate. So I've seen that multiple times. I probably got that on video. Somebody somebody lining up right here to our left. But see, here you come off the interstate right here, make a right. Then you go down here and then right past the the automobile fuel pumps, there's a little 
turn to your right and that takes you straight to the fuel island for diesel that's the way you're supposed to go in to this pilot right here we'll go well pilot yeah. so that's one of the reasons i don't park in uh that round boot before is the reason i don't park here in this specific if i do park in this area it's on the other side it's at the at the bar there's a barbecue place if you buy 15 dollars worth of food they let you park overnight so it's kind of win-win pay for parking you give some food i don't go to the ta i don't go park at the loves you definitely don't want to park at the loves because the loves there's only one way into the parking lot and one way out so you got to go back there and turn around and it's tight so I don't, I don't even go in there but if i do i park right in front of the speedco there's a barbecue place over there that's where i usually park and then so sometimes you might catch me at the flying j if i can get a spot uh over here where these tracks are back then there's there's parking right there other than that i park i try to push out of atlanta so and you see people parking on the shoulder when we came in people parking on the shoulder exit it's everybody tries to Pile in into these truck stops and you know. As I would be on the phone with my friends, I, I would say people are just driving. They're they're not trip planning, as I would say. They're just like, oh, let me pick up my load, I'm gonna drive my time, and then as soon as I run out of time, I'll find somewhere to park. Instead of while you're picking up your load, you look at place, okay, I got this much time, I can make it here, here, here. Oh, if I stop here and I wake up at this time, I can still make it on time, or this, this, this. But then you learn with experience as well that, hey, these places are no, no good to park at. So, but, and then also the bad thing is, just say you get here late at night, do park right there. Soon as you get over here, to 215, 210, 215 is McDonough. And that's the main, you got all these highways kind of joining that McDonough and it gets, it comes to a standstill every morning in McDonough. So you kind of shooting yourself in the foot. So people always say, hey, oh, I hate Atlanta, there's always traffic. Yeah, everybody's trying to push in Atlanta at, at the same time you know what I mean but if you guys uh, this is what I do it's a little tip if I'm driving right and I see a spot that is uh, oh the trucks are parked at maybe like a little get off or on a off ramp somewhere in Atlanta you see trucks park and they're not getting bothered I go on my Google Maps and drop a pin right there that way, if I'm ever in a bind and I'm there, I know I can probably go to this location and maybe maybe find a parking spot. So, yes, sir. You want to sell water on it? Uh, yeah, what's the prices? Uh, it's the same price either way you go. Yeah. And just soak water on the truck and trailer. Yes, and we're doing a brush on the trailer, it costs a little bit extra to brush it. Oh, no, I ain't paying for it. I think they just want it. Truck and trailer wash it. Well, people always put a bad name on the blue beacon but there's two blue beacons that i do go to and this is one here at the petro in carnesville and the other one is in georgia on 20 i think it's temple temple georgia so that's not a bad uh those two are not bad they always do a good job see one it's clean it cleans up nice i do give them they didn't have to clean much since it was washed yesterday before I picked up the load, so. But hopefully it looks good now, so. And once you polish, once you polish your rims one time, it's like you usually only gotta do it once a year. 
<clears throat> once you polish, they kind of like, once you clean them off real good, it goes back. Like I, I think I polished this tank. It had to be over a year ago and it still looks decent. And then look, my trailer rims are pretty good too, so. Yeah, I'm very, I don't go to Blue Beacon often, but if I do, it's here in Carnesville and the one in Temple, Georgia. I think it's exit 19, I think it is. Right across the street from the Flying J. Those are two good ones, so. Let's get to, let's get to uh, Gillsville. We're only like 20 minutes away. I had to pass the exit to to come get my truck washed because uh, it's mandatory. So let's go.
was here the last time I, I came here. Last time I came here, I came to pick up eggs. So it might be a little different now. Pick up, I don't know if you live here. y'all think that's worth right now it's a million dollar load huh so let's get it back then shouldn't take too long they just opened the dock door so should be out in a minute capture this this beauty of a truck over here it is a smaller sleeper i already don't have a lot of space in my truck so i just imagine that being over the road in that truck looks nice but i don't think i i can do it but i've never been on the inside it might just it doesn't look that much smaller than mine to be honest Mine might be a little taller, probably that's about it. But it looks nice though. I like the look of it. So he came from over there where they where you pick up the eggs at. Um, I'm I'm at the part where you deliver, so still getting unloaded, been here over 30 minutes, so hopefully not too much longer. 